Hello. This is your friendly curmudgeon once again, trying to steadily improve, working towards a actually professionally looking podcast. Notice, for example, that I now have a backdrop. I'm planning to make it a solid color sooner or later, but I think it's an improvement. Anyway, I've got a couple of topics that I want to talk about, but I'm also trying to keep this podcast in about the range of like five to ten minutes, not more than that. So I think I'm going to have to divide the topic into two parts. So this is the curmudgeon. I'm here to offer you a couple words on words. Here's the thing. What I've observed is that there seem to be very two very different schools of thought about the stasis or flexibility of language. On the one hand, you have the old school grammarians, teachers, who insist that words mean what words mean. Um, On the other hand, there are people that take the position, and sadly, I think this is very postmodernist, that my words mean what I mean them to mean what I mean them to mean what I mean. I'm sorry, I'm only slightly exaggerating there. Here's the problem. There's truth to both of these. On the one hand, well, let me talk about the second school of thought first, which is more um, postmodern. If your words only mean what you mean them to mean when you mean them to mean what you mean them to mean, then I'm sorry, folks. They do not mean a god darn thing. At that point, you might as well just be doing god darned interpretive dance. Because we have evolved language because we are not capable of telepathy. You can't just say, yada, 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 and then object that someone did not understand the nuance and subtlety of the meaning that you were trying to convey. You can, it is presumptuous to expect other people to read your mind. You need to say clearly, directly, distinctly what you mean to say. On the other hand, on the other hand, the old school of thought is that language is somehow static. But you know what? If you look at the Webster's website, they're always sharing new words all the time. Language evolves and it changes. That's one of the delights of lexicographers, how language continues to evolve and change. But here's the problem. Sometimes words that convey a very important and elegant and subtle shade of meaning get co-opted to mean something broader and vaguer. The case that comes to mind is the word awesome. Well, let's look at this word, awe. What does the word awe mean? Originally, it meant something that put you into a state of consciousness where you were beyond time and space. But lately, I've noticed that people are using this word just to mean, oh, I really, really like that. And when I see people use that word, I ask them, oh, so how did this kind of put you into a state where you were beyond time and space? And they will get very cross with me and respond, I don't know, it was awesome, ma'am. The word awe has a very specific meaning. And we word, when we use the word awesome, to convey anything that stirs us emotionally, we leech that word of its power to convey a very 
profound state of being. On the other, other hand, how many hands are I talking now? I think one, two, three. Um, on the other, other hand, is there a balance be found between these two approaches to language? Is language only totally what is the current bleeding edge of what a given word means? Or do words have power and significance and value unto themselves? I would like to suggest that perhaps the truth is somewhere between the two. Perhaps, perhaps we have to allow for the fact the language changes and grows and develops. But on the other hand, if we are substituting a vague general meaning for something that was used to be very powerful and important and solo, can we not make a valid judgment that that's not appropriate? Shouldn't language be a powerful and useful tool to convey meaning to each other? Because on the one hand, if we state, um, oh, my friend Doc has just weighed in, thank you Doc, that awesome and awful used to be synonyms. And yes, actually they did because they were both conveying whatever instilled the state of all. Thank you, Doc, a valid point. Um, here's the thing. If we all get, if we get all loosey-goosey with our words and expect people to understand what we mean with, regardless of what the words actually mean, and that leaches out the entire power and value and significance of language. But on the other hand, it is entirely valid that language changes and evolves in the course of time. What should we do? Well, I don't want to go over 10 minutes and I'm already at 7, 52, 7 minutes 52 seconds. So, my first comment is this, perhaps, perhaps, I know, waxing Aristotelian here, perhaps the truth lies in the middle. We should allow for the fact that language changes and grows. Slang is empower, powerful and important, and colorful, creative slang actually can improve the power of language to communicate important truths. On the other hand, I think we have a responsibility to ourselves, to those who we are trying to communicate with, to our linguistic community as a whole, to prefer always for language that conveys more subtlety, more nuance, more value than words that are just taking subtle, important, valuable words and using them for something general and vague and subjective that undermines, under, undermines the power of language to actually convey meaning. This is just a quick thought, and I'm close, getting close to what I'm trying to set as a 10 minute limit. I'm planning to do another um, recording sometime soon. This is a very important word that I want to talk about. One word that has been undermined and is a, thus an exemplar um, of what I'm talking about whose meaning, subtlety, importance has been undermined by loose usage. And that word is friendship. 
and I'm going to talk about the three different types of friendship that Aristotle sets out in his Nicomedean ethics and why using friendship to mean something that it does not undermines the power and the importance of friendship. What do you think? Does this background work? Or should I get something a little more solid or with a small pattern? Anyway, talk to you soon. Just passing thought. This is your curmudgeon. Have a good night.